Who are you? And who are you really? So the teachings of Ramana Maharshi, his question and his teaching is, who am I? Who am I? And not answering through the conceptual mind, because if you answer through the conceptual mind, that's not who you are. You are not a thought. You are not an emotion. You are not even this body, yet we have a body, yet we have thoughts that come through, yet we have emotions that arise. So like the device, if we only pay attention to the body, the mind, the emotion we forget and lose who we really are. But if you can put that aside, know that it's there, know that you have your device locked away in your suitcase, know that you have thoughts, know that you have emotions, but your attention, at least some of your attention, is within the stillness that you are, so in the space consciousness that you are, then all this other stuff, the mind, the emotions, the events that happen, it's like it becomes secondary, it becomes relatively important. Not so important, but relatively important. Because when you don't know yourself, all this becomes important. Everything, your emotions, your mind, your thoughts, your opinions, your ideas, they become important. But this is the ultimate importance, is the stillness that you are. And when you recognize and sit in the stillness that you are, then this other stuff just happens. You allow it to rise and you allow it to go. Yes, you'll have to experience it. Yes, you'll have to feel what arises. Because there's always different things that arise. You feel it and you let it go. You experience it. You may even think about it. You may have some thoughts about it. But it's not that you take your thoughts so seriously. You go, oh, okay, that's an interesting thought or that's an interesting opinion that I have about this. Okay, let it go. But return to presence. So the practice then becomes not giving 100% of your attention out there, but keep some attention within. So you have some attention within, you can feel your breath, you can feel your body, you can feel the sensations in your body, you can feel the inner body, you can feel the stillness within you, and yet all of this is happening You're not going to lose yourself in the world of form. The world of form will occur and it will continue to occur. But you're here. You're grounded in the present moment. You're grounded in the stillness that you are. And yes, there will be challenges. Life will come around and it will test you. Okay, are you present? Have you let this go yet? It'll show you. And then we begin to welcome those challenges because it only shows us, ah, it humbles us actually. If we could see it as that, if we, if we stop thinking that Oh, once we awaken, this is it. Nothing else should bother me, bother me the rest of my life, which is just a thought. There's only ever this moment, and this moment is only when we can awaken, is this moment here. But the mind might come in and will say, but I want what Eckhart had. He awoke. Virtually, overnight. I want that. Well, that's... Yeah, see? I mean, I wanted that too. Wouldn't that be lovely? Well, that's a thought. (laughs) And it's a lovely thought. 
Is it going to happen? Don't know. Just have to be here right now. Just right now. If you can awaken right now, then you've done it. And then you watch the momentum of the mind. It'll come in, of course. And it will say, oh, but I want to keep that. I mean, you had a meditation, and it was a very profound meditation. And the next day, you can go and sit during your meditation, and you want what you had yesterday, man. It's like, oh, I want that. So the more that you hang on to yesterday, the more that you are not present, and you will never, ever experience a profound moment again, because you're still back here. So let go of the experience that you had. No experience is it. You can have a wonderful experience, and it's absolutely beautiful, but even the experience is not it. So I was in India, and I, when I would travel to India, and I'd go around to all these different spiritual teachers and gurus, whatnot. <clears throat> and um, I was in, well, I had two experiences that were really close together and was very profound and wonderful. One, I was in a Christian church, and these birds were in this church because there was a hole in the ceiling, so the birds would fly in, and I'd look up at these birds, and these birds, I was just like, oh my God, these birds are like, they're angels. And then I was at an ashram, and um, standing in line, and listening to, I can't remember what it's called, something like Artie, where they play this this beautiful music, and and then I looked up, and it was like the sky. I literally saw this. The sky opened up, and I saw angels, and it was like, wow, is that even God up there? You know, it was just like so wonderful, and I felt so peaceful. And then that evening, I went to go visit a, a spiritual teacher, and I told them of my experience. And I said, oh, I saw God. I saw angels. And he goes, that's not it. (laughs) And I go, no, what do you mean that's not it? I go, no, I saw God. I saw angels. The sky opened up and I saw God. I saw angels. That's not it. And his wife who was sitting there, she just thought, oh my God, this is going to go on forever. I'm going to go to bed. But it didn't. I think it lasted about 15 minutes. But that's all he did was repeat. That's not it. Didn't say anything else to me. And, but I was convinced, and I was trying to convince him that, no, I had a spiritual experience where I saw God. I saw angels. No, nope, that's not it. And then it finally dawned on me, 15 minutes later. I go, oh, of course, no spiritual experience, no matter how profound is it. I am still stuck there in that experience and that, yeah, in that moment, that felt like it, but that was just the manifestation of whatever it was that I was experiencing. And this moment now is all there is. And this is it right here, right now, not in form, but in the formless dimension where forms happen Yes. And they could be profound. Yes. Or they could be miserable. Yes. But no experience is it. I'm like, wow. Can't hang on to anything. Have to let it all go. Nothing. No thing is it. Anything that's manifested is not it. Wow. And then you're left with nothing, and that is scary. That became scary. It was just like, oh no. If nothing is it, then what what is there? There is nothing. And my mind was racing around trying to find something to grasp onto, something to hold onto. 
And that's what the mind does. It will run around to hold on to something. Because that's what the ego does. That's how we forget who we are. As soon as we grab hold of something and hold on to it so tightly that nothing else, this profound moment, which is no thing at all, can be realized and can be sensed and felt and directly experienced in this moment. <laughs> 